Welcome to the All In Podcast, the show that explores how the top real estate entrepreneurs have gone all in on their businesses. I'm your host, David Morse, with my co-host, Joe Quattrucci, and I invite you to come along with us as we explore the stories of the most elite professionals in the game today to learn how they went all in and how you and I can do the same. So I just have to ask, are you all in? All right, welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. We are so excited for, dude, are we on episode 30? The big three zero. The big three zero. Both of our ages. I, both of our ages. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> episode 30 of the All In Podcast. I'm your host, David Moore, CEO and team leader of Keller Williams Arizona Realty in Scottsdale and North Phoenix with my co-host, Joe Quattrucci, the director of growth for the Kristen Cole Real Estate Network. And Joe, I want to start off today's show really by just talking a little bit about connectedness, all right? One of the things that I think we've both found in our lives is that we're we're only separated. Like we, there's that thing called 6 degrees of separation and and we're all connected to people that we don't even realize. And one of the cool things about that and about running big brokerages and being connected and networking with our agents is that we get brought into contact with some really cool people. So like I mean, we've had guests on this on, on this podcast so far this year that like I've reached out to or you've reached out to or they've reached out to us. But today we have a guest that was kind of connected to us in an interesting way through one of my associate leadership council members, someone who's in your uh, the Kristen Cole real estate network world. And uh, we, we wanted to just bring Don Aldridge on for the first couple minutes here just to share how we got connected to today's guest, who is none other than the legend <laughs> Tom Hopkins. So, Tom, welcome to the show. Don, welcome to the show. And, and and Don, just just share with us how how are we sitting with the Tom Hopkins today? Well, thank you for having us in. We appreciate this. This is exciting. So, thirty five years ago, before you guys were born, <laughs> I was a we real didn't give that away. <laughs> I was a real estate rookie, twenty eight years old, and my manager at Coldwell Banker said, Don, you need to look at these tapes. Now they were called VHS tapes. Yeah, I have no idea what that I means. I know, <laughs> videotapes. And it was How to Master the Art of Selling, how to, how to Sell Real Estate by Tommy Hopkins. So at night, after working all day, I'd go into the conference room by myself, eat a microwave meal, sitting in front of the TV, and I would watch How to Hold an Open House what to say to an expired, what to say to a for sale buyer, how to show a buyer, how to, how to door knock. And I would eat, finish the tape, go in and make calls till 8.30 at night. Um, then I took a one day, Tom had a, a boot camp. He was known for the Tom Hopkins boot camp. So I took a one day version of that, met him, and then went off to different coaching and never saw him again. 35 years later, Two weeks ago, knocking doors in my geographical farm of Scottsdale Ranch. Stop right there. Okay, guys, did you hear that? 35 years in the business and he was knocking doors. You want to be successful? Stay committed to the fundamentals. Keep going. Every day, knock on doors. And about four years ago, I noticed in the tax records that the home ownership had changed. And I saw Tom and Michelle Hopkins. And I, I knew he lived in Paradise Valley, but I'm like, nah, can't be. Well, I ne never got them because they travel a lot. Two weeks ago, knocked on the door, his lovely wife, Michelle, answered, and we had a conversation, and, and, and I said, is your husband the, uh, I didn't even get it out. She goes, yes, that's him. <laughs> and I said, awesome. So I told her the story about watching the VHS tapes, and I remember the ice cream story. I'll let you tell that. And anyway, so, so that led to Tom calling me back, leaving a nice message, and he asked me over to his home Saturday morning. We sat for an hour, and we did... Um, we did a little recording for an hour, and that led to today. I love so it. I met him again from something he taught me 35 years ago, knocking on doors. Amazing. So and because of, because of that story, um, all of our listeners today get to learn from Tom. Absolutely. We get to learn from Tom. And I think that's one of the most 
amazing parts of this podcast, Joe, is that like we get to be the beneficiaries of people who've gone before us who have been highly successful and we get to take that and implement it and go all in on what they they share with us so don i appreciate you being you. here and sharing that story i'm gonna slide away but i'm taking notes <laughs> and so should notes. you <laughs> pay attention thank I, you guys I thank it. you don yeah so so tom i want you to take take us back um who are you what is your business and you know how did you get into real estate well, excuse me, what happened was uh, I went 90 days to college and after three months realized that the academic setting was not for me. And of course, I broke my father's heart when I quit college. Because back then, it was almost if you didn't have a college education, you could not become successful. And so my dad, who was an achiever, when I came home, I, I said, Dad, I'm quitting college. And I'd never seen my father cry. He was a strong man. And tears filled his eyes. And he said, son, I will always love you because you're my son. Even though now, based on your decision to not go to college, I really know you'll never amount to anything. Oh, wow. Which was really my first motivational talk. Because here is the man that you have up here saying you'll never amount to anything. Well, I went in my bedroom and I was almost in tears. And that night, my uncle came to have dinner with us, Uncle Don Hansen. And he was the general manager of Bethlehem Steel, which in Los Angeles was the most successful steel company. And he came into my bedroom and he says, you quit college. I said, Uncle Don, it's not for me. He says, what are you going to do with your life? I says, I don't know. He says, well, I've been, we've just been given the job to build the Los Angeles Dodgers Stadium for the baseball team, and we need iron workers. And he said, we can pay you $4.30 an hour if you'll come out and carry steel. Now, keep in mind, I'm just 18. And I said, I got to do something. So I said, yes. Well, of course, here I am, the nephew of the general manager. And all these other men are much older. They're old 30 years, 40 year old guys. And I show up at 18. And of course, they knew I was the general manager's nephew. So they worked my butt off. I mean, I'm <laughs> five foot seven. <laughs> but I was six foot two. <laughs> and I started carrying steel. The weight of all that steel. <laughs> yeah, right. But I, I did that for a year, worked very hard. And I went and got my uh, apprenticeship license and I went and did all this stuff because I thought I'd become a foreman carrying steel. And anyway, long and short of it, my uh, dad at this point saw how hard I worked. And he said, he came over to the house. He says, son, I'm, I'm proud of how hard you work. Uncle Don says you out carry steel from all the other guys. Do you want to do this the rest of your life? I said, dad, I don't. He goes, look, you're 18 now. And in California, you can get a real estate license. I says, oh, dad, I couldn't pass the exam. I had such a low self-esteem. I thought I couldn't pass an exam. And my dad said, sure you can. Well, I took the damn real, uh, darn real estate license, <laughs> excuse me, three times. And the fourth time I finally passed. And of course, luckily, uh, I got into a company, Coal Banker, and the manager of the office just took me under his wing and helped me learn how to take a listing, how to show a home, how to present a low offer on a property, all the things in real estate we do to make money. And then I went to a seminar. I was just not even 19 yet. And the big guy on the stage said, find the most successful person in your company and humble yourself and ask if you can go with them on listings and showing. Well, back then there was a woman, a woman named Rose Lane, highest income work, working uh, realtor in California. Well, I found her, 
I called her. I said, my name is Tom Hopkins. I'm uh, just not even 19, but I got a real estate license and I've heard you're the best. Can we talk? Well, she said, yes. And we, we hit it off. And she said I could go with her when she showed homes, go with her on a listing. And I mean, I was a sponge because I would listen to every word she would say. And I would say, that's going to become me. And sure enough, six months later, I was one of the top producers after almost six months of making no money. So I've always been a believer is you've got to find the people that know what you don't and learn from them instead of trying to recreate the wheel on your own. And so that's kind of what happened. And of course, I uh, was the top producer for Cobo Banker in California. And uh, it's a funny story. I was talking to Don how fate is such a funny thing. Uh, because I was 24 now, my fifth year, and I sold 365 homes that year. 365. Averaged one a day. My manager calls me in and says, you know, uh, we got a call from the uh, National Association of Realtors. And they're having their convention in L.A. And they've heard what you've done. And they want you to come and teach at the national convention. Well, see, as a 24-year-old kid, they were going to give me an hour or an hour and a half with about 100 people. And there was 5,500 people at the convention. Well, I didn't go on till one in the afternoon, but I thought, what the heck? I'm up at eight, put my suit on, put my little badge on. And I'm standing there on the side of the big arena and there's 5,500 people and I'm only gonna speak to 150. Well, I'm standing there watching and all of a sudden the president of the association comes over and there was a man named Thomas Peters who wrote a book called The Peter Principle back in the 60s, which was a national bestseller. And that was their featured speaker to start. Well, all of a sudden, the president of the association comes over to me and says, Tom, Thomas Peters is caught in L.A. traffic. We got to get started. Can you go on? Oh, my goodness. You see how things happen? <laughs> Instead of 150, I got 5,500 people. Now, of course, the president said, you can only talk until he gets here. I have no idea what I'm going to say, no idea how long. So I'll never forget, I walked out on the stage, and of course, the president said, ladies and gentlemen, but while we're waiting for Thomas Peters, our author, to come and teach, we have a young man here who's 24, and last year... He sold 365 homes, averaging one a day. And the whole audience went, oh, there's no one. Back then, if you sold four homes a day, a, a, a month, you were hot stuff. Right. And so I had 365. And so I, I walked out, and I'll never forget, I looked out at 5,500 people, and I looked out at this audience, and I said, are you all aware that you and most of the people back at your office are saying 10 words that are costing you and your company millions of dollars a year. So quickly, take out a card and write down the 10 rejection words we can never say. Mm. All the coats open. Because, you know, here's a kid who did 365 <laughs> homes. <laughs> right, they're I'm, listening. I'm they're listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went through the 10 words. It took me 12 minutes. Amazing how everything works. I finished the 10th word in 12 minutes, and the president comes out and says, Tom, uh, Thomas Peters is here for his session. And they looked at the 5,500 people. He says, what do you think of this young guy? I got a standing ovation like you would not believe because no one had ever taught the 10 rejection words you don't say in a presentation. And my phone started ringing off the hook. And from that moment on, I had two years where I was called by realtors to come and speak. And I did it for free because I knew the key is to do it for getting money. You have to practice, drill, and rehearse what you say so you're a pro. So for two years, I would travel all over California, primarily only California, doing these talks. And then... One day, I said, I got to write a book. And that's when I wrote my first book, How to Master the Art of Selling. 
and my phone rang off the hook and I have done over uh, 5,000 seminars with over 5 million people. Oh my so goodness. it's been a great, wonderful, what an incredible wow. story. <laughs> it is, and this is what, I mean, it, I, we knew this was going to be a fun interview today because I mean, the stories that we've already heard and we're going to go into more, but I want to just like, I want to step it back to just how you started that. I mean, hearing from the most influential person in your life, your father, like, I, I mean, we all have dads, like, and, and to hear, you know, a, the disappointment yes. in his voice. How did you not like let that impact you to such a degree that you didn't go? Well, and I really, I really believe, uh, David, that everybody that's successful at one point had something to prove to someone. And my dad saying I would never amount to anything, in a way, was the fire, where I kind of said, "Oh yeah." I don't know what I'm going to do. I carried steel for a year. I broke my back out in the steel field. And then all of a sudden, I got my real estate license after three failures and one success. And then sure enough, I walked into an office where they really took care of me. And I, again, I met this woman who was the top realtor in California then. And she took me with her on listing appointments, showing homes. And I mean, I would take notes and in all my books, I've tried to give phraseology, you know, like what you say, if they say it costs too much, you have 14 words you say. They say they want to think it over, you have 73 words you say, because we're all in the word business. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much what you say, but how you deliver your presentation, how you say what you say. And... I became a fanatic on phraseology uh, because I really believe that anything they say, I have to know what to say to turn their no into a yes, because all of us are in the yes business. Right. And every yes is just hidden behind those two letters in O. We got to get past the no into the yes and close a transaction. That's fantastic. Uh -huh. I just want to kind of recap some of the things that we've already heard so far. If I could talk real quick. First of all, find somebody who's doing what you're doing right. and go copy them. And right. I love the boldness of you reaching out to the top performer and saying, I want to shadow you. Yes. And so that's just, first of all, incredible advice for all agents, even still today. Number two, study the words. You've got to know what to say. Right. I love that how you just said every yes is behind those that two letter word N O right and so we you just gotta you've got to be able to find a way to get around it and there's always a way and then the third thing is opportunity opens doors and I wrote that down because I'm thinking about you were just kind of in the right place at the right time for that speaking engagement right and that even leads into another qu the, the the next question I have for you which is I understand you had an interesting experience when you first started at your brokerage uh, with your broker and so could you could you tell us a little bit about that story um, take taking you out in the car oh yes well what happened was I had been four and a half months in the real estate business and I was like most agents sitting at my desk hoping I could make a sale not knowing what the heck I was going to do. And my manager walked over and he had just got a brand new Lincoln Continental, which back in those days, this is way back, that was the big real estate car. That was big the four door yeah. <laughs> Lincoln tank. Anyway, so he says, you want to go for a ride? I said, I'd love to. So I got in that big Lincoln and we drove up into a residential area not knowing where he's going. And all of a sudden, he pulls his car over and stops. I said, what are we doing here? He says, Tom, get out of the car. I said, why? <laughs> he says, you're sitting around the office. You're never going to make any money waiting for the phone to ring or for someone to come in. you got to talk to people. So we're three miles from the office and just knock on all these doors back to the office. I thought, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I cursed him. <laughs> he drove off. I had no idea what to say. Right. And I'll never forget that first door. It's almost like I can remember. I knocked on the door and the man answered. I said, hi, uh, I'm uh, Tom uh, Hopkins. Uh, uh, I'm in real estate. Uh, you guys thinking of maybe moving? <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> Love the directness. <laughs> yes. So, of course, the manager who dropped me off said every hundred doors where you talk to strangers, you'll find one good qualified future listing or selling appointment. So, of course, I'm counting. And I hit 64, door 64. And I knock on the door. Now I've got a little better phrase, phraseology. Uh, Hi, I'm Tom Hopkins with Coal Banker and Real Estate. And my manager asked me to come out and talk to people thinking someone may want to buy or sell a home. Do you have any interest? He goes, you are in real estate because I was so young. I said, yeah. He said, stay here. And he turns, he goes, honey, come to the front door. Well, a woman walks up and the husband says, this young man is a realtor. And she said, do you have a real estate license? Because I look so young. I said, yeah, I do. She goes, please come in. What scared me? I never had anybody say come in. <laughs> What's this? What do I do now? <laughs> Shoot, I had that scared now. <laughs> the long and short of it, they, it was, it was cute in a way because she said, Mr. Hopkins, looking at my car, Mr. Hopkins, uh, my husband is transferred. And we found out that he has to leave the three children and I to sell this home. And we got on our knees last night and prayed that God would send us a real estate agent. And I went, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> here, here I am. Sovereign intervention. <laughs> I love but what's so funny is I got not only took the listing, I found a buyer for it myself, but that was the start. And then, of course, a, a man at a seminar said, whenever you have a listing or make a sale, the 50 people around that home need to know what you've done because they may have a need. So I started knocking doors. It's kind of like with Don. You know, he knocked on my door. And how this all happened is because he's a realtor, knocked on my door. So I'm knocking on all these doors. And sure enough, I would say for every 25 or 30 doors, I would get someone that had a desire to either list or sell a home. Then, of course, I would send them a very nice thank you note. I'd put them in a file. Back then, we didn't have the computers, so I would keep in touch. I'd make so many calls every night. And that's kind of how the whole thing started building. And again, don't forget this, all of you listening or watching. Your activities create productivity, but you've got to have more activities to where, yes, you put your ego on the line. Yes, you can be rejected. Yes, you'll have to handle the no's to get the yeses, but that's how we build it. And of course, if you do this the way I teach, you'll prospect your way out of ever having to prospect. Wow. Wow. Isn't that true? Yes. That, that is absolutely true. So after my third year, I never had time to prospect because I had all these clients. And, of course, they'd refer me to their friends. And I, I, I had great relationships with people. I've always loved people. You know, there's an old saying, uh, love people and use money. Don't use people and love money, which I believe is so true. And my last year, I had almost 500 very close clients. And every year I'd have a party. My last year I had almost 500 folks come to the house party. And of course, they never forget you if you give back and if you follow up and you keep in touch. And you, know, you build a relationship, yeah. which is what I always tried to do. Well, and bringing it back to the, the phrase that Joe highlighted a few minutes ago, opportunity opens doors. You know, you just think about the... I asked the question, what if you had stopped on door 63, yes. right? Or door 62. And I, I just had a conversation with one of, one of our young agents here, young, bright, sharp kid. And he was prepping to go door knocking today. And it's like, it's that agent that needs to hear this. It's, it's uh, you know, the agent who's on door 63 that needs to hear a story like that because it's right there in your, in your activity dictates your productivity. That's, I mean, so, it is. so good. And, and one thing I want to add, too, is this new young person needs to rehearse what to say. In other words, you've got to blame 
upper management for why you're doing it. <laughs> now, let that sink in. You know, you knock on a door or ring a doorbell and the man or woman answers. Hi, I'm Tom Hopkins. Give your own name, of course. And uh, the company I represent, name of company, the management, I always say upper management, has given me an assignment. They've asked me to come through this area and see if anybody has any real estate needs. And I hate to in any way bother you, but I loved what I'm doing. And do you know anyone that I might serve with their real estate needs? Now, see, because you blame upper management, they also, most of them have upper management who tell them what to do. Sure. So they have to do what they're told to do. So in a way, you're blaming the company for why you're knocking on their door or ringing their bell. And that phraseology is so important. Uh, this new person you're talking about, you are their upper management, so you must give them an instruction. I want you to talk to this many strangers at the door this week. Now they have an assignment. They aren't wanting to, they have to, and they blame you. <laughs> and the person in the door says, I understand, I got a manager, I'd love to smack him right in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you, you hear that, Keller Williams Scottsdale, blame, <laughs> blame the management. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tom, why do you think, since we're on the topic, why do you think so many people let their fear or their insecurity about that rejection get in their way of preventing them from doing what they know they should be doing to get the results? Well, that four-letter word fear is what holds so many people back. Yeah. The fear of the unknown, the fear of someone rejecting them. Uh, I had to work real hard on that word. And I think anyone it, 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 listening or uh, watching us or what up today, you got to realize that you got to, I lived by a sentence, do what you fear most and you control fear. And I, that's what I had to learn to do. Get out there, knock on doors, have them reject me. I know I had rejection, uh, but I, again, I went to another seminar and the man said, hey, they can never really hurt you by rejecting you at the door. And he said, if you really are going to get good, when they reject you at the front door, you go to the back door. <laughs> and I thought, what the heck? You know, I'm going to do it. And I did. I knocked on one door. I'm Tom Hopkins with Cole Banker. And she said, you heard a realtor. We hate you people. Why do you keep bothering us? And slammed the door. I said, okay, I'm seeing you at the back door. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what was so funny? I went through the gate, went to the back door, knocked on it, op they opened it up, and she laughed. She says, I cannot believe <laughs> that after slamming the door in your face, you would come to the back door. I said, well, I want to serve your real estate needs. If not today, someday in the future. How's that sound? Well, we ever needed, and she took my card. I wrote her a thank you note, and sure enough, over the years, we had some business. But again, it's all back to getting the ego out of the way, handling the fear of failure, and again, doing what you fear most is what most su successful people do for a period of time to where they prospect themselves out of ever having to prospect because they build a following, a client base which is, of course, what happened in my real estate career. I never knocked on a door after my third year, had no time, phone ringing off the hook. And, of course, you know, Coal Banker was a big company then, or huge today, but, you know, I was their top producer. And when you are a top producer in a big, nice company, doors open. I'm sure the, the top folks at Keller Williams, they doors open for them because they've spent time building a client base counting on the referrals from those people and, you know, willing to get out there every day. And as Don did, knock on those doors, big smile, take a hello, goodbye, or go get lost and just keep going. It's yeah. all numbers in the beginning. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 I love what you said. When you do what you fear, you control fear. That's right. And, and then the other piece just about the, the ego, like I've heard people, you know, use the acronyms like ego is, you know, edging God out or edging greatness out or anything <laughs> like that. And when you remove the ego from it and, and you don't take it so personally, like, <gasps> how dare she slam the door on me? 
and, and you are able to let air out of the balloon, so sure. to speak, and, and, and kind of control the situation. Sure. Like you made it fun and you made a connection with that person that never went away and it led, led to business. And you wouldn't have been able to do that if you let your pride get away. That's right. Away. No, and again, it's so easy to talk about after it all happens, but a person has to make that commitment. Like the young man we're talking about that you're going to get out there he needs to realize it's a numbers game in the beginning and rehearse your script of what you say so that all of a sudden you're coming across with words that don't threaten them. You know, like, hi, you thinking of moving and selling your house? Well, that's threatening. You know, the upper management's asked me to come by and visit with some neighbors who might have a need for our real estate services with Keller Williams. Anyway, we could serve you. See, anyway, we could serve you is, is a, such a better feeling than do you want to list or sell your home? And again, it's not so much what you say, but also how you say it to come across with the right feelings. Yeah, love that. So Tom, there you are in your fourth year, you close 365 homes, averaging one a day. What happens next in your career? Oh, I kept, I kept doing it for uh, three more years because I figured, you know what? I, I started buying property because I realized the real wealth in real estate is not selling it, but owning it. So I started buying apartment houses in California and uh, knock on wood, I found a man here when I moved here who traded all of my properties and he bought them in California because I had a lot of homes, a lot of properties and a lot of management. But, you know, I think, you know, you got to take a risk. You have to put yourself on the line to, you know, make money. And uh, the real wealth in real estate is owning it, taking advantage of tax advantages, which knock on wood, we still have some great tax advantages of income property. How long, I don't know. Uh, but I think, you know, today is a great time to look into investing in real estate, especially here uh, in Arizona. I think we're in a real beautiful spot. Uh, my wife and I have our second home up in Flag, and in Flagstaff, you can get a great property for half of what you pay down here. So I, I always try to tell people, go where the homes are inexpensive. Go into partnership with a realtor. Like, say, for example, if, if I wasn't doing what I do, I'd go to Flagstaff, and I'd look at the number one Keller Williams, Coal Banker, Century 21, find a top office. I'd go in to see the manager and I'd say, you know, Mr. Whatever, uh, my name is Tom Hopkins and I want to invest in some investment property, but I want to do it in a partnership arrangement with one of your top producer and always ask for the top producer to see the top producer in an office will not only have the money, but it'll be a better guide to get you to where you should be. So I would always say, who's your top producer? And if it was Jim Smith, I'd say, Jim, my name is Tom Hopkins. My wife and I are looking to invest in some investments up here. And I'd love to go into a partnership with you. You find the property. You earn the full commission. I come up with half the money. You come up with half of it. And now we have a nice relationship. And I found I could get so many realtors to partner with me to buy properties and there again, you have one another person sharing the investment. So that's an idea too. Yeah, I, I like that. It's, it's creative and it, it splits the risk and, and, and you're 100% right. It's still the case right now. It, the real wealth is built in owning and controlling real estate. Yes. Um, so, okay, so, so huge success for three, three more years, you said, after, yes. after that initial big right. year. Um, but you know, from my understanding, the real passion and energy in your life has been around the the speaking and the teaching sure. and the writing. Like, how did you pivot your success into that new endeavor? Well, kind of what happened was when that man didn't show up at the national convention in Los Angeles, I started getting calls and I started going. And again, I, I didn't charge anything in the beginning. Because I really believe it's kind of like if you want to be a great golfer, no one's going to pay you to play golf unless you take some lessons and you pay. Well, that's the same in anything. So I decided I was going to just go out and give uh, presentations and talk to people. And uh, believe me, <clears throat> it was scary. 
everybody that knew me in California and heard that I was giving up my real estate business eight years and moving to Arizona, having no idea what I was going to do other than buy this real estate school, they all thought I was nuts. But again, the door opened. I got the real estate school. I moved next door to the gentleman who was my life changer, Mr. Edwards, not having any idea where he lived. So, I mean, doors open when you take advantage of opportunities, which I think we all need to do. Definitely. Okay, so so bring us into that that gentleman, that relationship, um, the school. So so how long did you have the school? And it, it, three years. Okay. Yeah, I did three years of teaching people, and it was interesting because it gave me. I, I would teach from nine in the morning till noon. Take off, come back, and teach from five in the evening till eight. So I had six hours a day, five days a week to practice what I would say. And it was, it was how I guess I learned how to be a speaker was to give the talks, teach the people what to say. And the brand new realtors, they loved it because there are real estate people that teach you how to get a license who didn't ever sell any real estate. But having eight years and 365 my last year closed sales, I could tell them exactly what to do. And of course, my first book, which was How to Master the Art of Selling Real Estate, that was number one of the 20. Um, they bought that book like crazy because in that book, whatever they say to you, look in the back of the book and what they say to you, here's what you say. So you can almost take and rehearse like an author um, or like an artist does. Uh, an actor or actress, which is an, in a way what we are. We are saying the right words, hopefully the right way to generate the right feelings, to excite them, to get them to say yes. Yeah. Well, and isn't it fascinating that so many new agents or even experienced agents will, you know, I hear it all the time, like, oh, well, scripts aren't for me. But some of the highest paid people in our world are actors and actresses who have made a commitment to scripts. Right. Well, and, and if you said thank you, I would say you're welcome. Now, I didn't memorize that. That's just what I would say. But everything they say, I'll know what to say. And if they rehearse it like an actor or actress, which in a way, again, I come back to the fact that we're all in the word business. And the words you say, how you say them, the words you don't say, which are rejection words, as I mentioned them, uh, like the word price, you never say the price of the home. It's the total investment. Price, they always want to think, let's shop for a lower one. Total investment sounds good. You never ask for a down payment. It's the initial investment. You never fill out a contract. That's scary. It's the paperwork or agreement. Let's draft up our feelings on the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's all all saying the right words yeah well, words matter oh and yeah we they keep do. coming we keep coming back to that yeah they sure do yeah. all right so i mean now you've waded into the 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 rejection words um what are, what are the other ones like okay. we, we've got to know we this, don't this want, is gold oh well, we don't want to say buy say you never say when you buy a home it's when you own people want to own they just don't want to buy uh -huh. or you never say sell or sold we would never say i sold that home right away they go you must have pushed them into it I got that family involved. People love to get involved. Mm. They just don't want to get sold. And you never say the word deal. See, this home is a good deal. Right away they go, we, we've heard bad deals. It's always an opportunity, never a deal. And you don't fill out the contract. It's the paperwork agreement. And uh, so these are an example. And you never ask people to sign anything. Mom and dad said, don't sign anything. <laughs> we asked them to give us their approval. I'll just need your approval right here. Love that. And, <laughs> and they'll go, oh, you mean you want us to sign? And you just smile and say, mm, fine, right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> just gold. Just, just little, little, gold. little tips and tricks yeah. that, like, I mean, come from years of experience. And, and it's just like, it, this is time tested. I mean, you learn this and, and you put it into practice, what, in the 60s? 60s, yeah. yeah. I mean, in the 60s. And it's still like... Every agent in my brokerage needs to listen to these 
things and, and put it into practice because it's these are time tested principles sure. because you're, we're still dealing with people. Now, all your people are in real estate, right? Yeah. What I need to do is um, I have a CD on real estate, covers all the listing and selling. And you guys may want to, Don and I'll get it to you, but you may want to say, we're going to take a course as if Tom is here with us. He's given us his real estate listing and selling program. So we're going to just watch it or listen to it. I'll figure out what Don and I can do. But I think you got to get your guys learning it. Well, so maybe, so maybe, maybe Joe, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and uh, do a special all in podcast group only private, uh, sure. private mastermind. I like it. This. Yeah, I yeah. think this is I a like good it idea. A lot. Yeah, Very I cool. would do that. So you, you mentioned you, you've written 20, you've written 20 books. 20 books. Um, what is, what's your favorite one? Well, of course, what, I, I think it's always the first one, how to master the art of selling. The reason I like this book is most people don't have time to read books. So I put 45 books the essence into this one little book so they don't have to read all the books that I have. And that's the official guide, guide to, to success. success. We'll link that up in the show notes for sure. Yeah. And of course, if you guys, you know, we have uh, my warehouse is down in Chandler and, you know, we have books and stuff. If you want to order anything for your guys, maybe have a gift or something, that's fine. Let me know and I'll work with Don. Well, fantastic. To put it together. Fantastic. Well, I, I feel like we could go for another hour and uh, <laughs> and we'll have to have you have you back. I'd um, love to. Um, but for right now, I want to uh, transition us into the last segment of our show, which okay. is called 321 Action. It's the same three questions we ask every guest. Okay. Um, so you're on the hot seat and uh, we're going to roll roll through these. All right. All right, Tom. Start, off, start us off by saying, who is the one most influential person on your success so far and why? Well, it would be J. Douglas Edwards, who was the guru of closing the sale. Larry Wilson in Minnesota, he was one of the people attitude-wise who really affected me in a positive way. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale was a dear, dear friend, he and his wife Ruth. So I've had these folks who were superstars, kind of as friends. And of course, I was always a brain picker. You know, I would sit down with someone and just like with your notes, I would say, hey, give me the two ideas that you feel were most influential in making you the person you are. And I would ask questions like this. But I would say those, uh, that Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, J. Douglas says words. Um, oh, and Earl Nightingale, who was my neighbor in Scottsdale before he passed away. Huh. And he, of course, in the 19, 1939, he made his first record. This is back before we had cassettes. They were all records. <laughs> and it was called The Strangest Secret. And this record, every one of us who were successful, we ate and ate and ate that record up. Then, of course, it went to uh, CDs. Now he's passed away. But I would say uh, Earl Nightingale, J. Douglas Edwards, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, those would be the people that really impacted me the most. I love that. Well, question number two, other than your own books, what has been the most impactful, influential book on your life and business? I would say Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret. That would be the book that I, I don't know if you can even get it. You know, you could probably go to Amazon and say, let me see all the Earl Nightingale stuff. But uh, that would be the one that I would put on the top of my list. What was it? What was that book about? Oh, the official got no. Um, uh, what was the name I gave you? The strangest secret. Yeah, it was all attitudinal. Okay. It wasn't technique. It was motivational. A lot of it's in here because I again had him as a mentor, but it was more of a. Oh, the strangest secret is basically how to achieve goals, hmm. short term and long term goals. And Mr. Uh, Nightingale was a master of teaching that. And he had this fabulous voice. And if you can find anything from Earl Nightingale, I would definitely order it. Okay. Because he is, was my, one of my mentors. I love it. Awesome, Tom. Third and final question. As you know, this is the All In Podcast where we challenge our listeners to go out there and take action. So what advice, <clears throat> what actionable step can our listeners go take today to start to move the needle forward in their business? Okay, I'm going to give them a formula. 
Oh, all right, we're ready. The first thing you must do is find out what your ultimate goal for annual income is. So we'll call that the AI goal, AIG, annual income goal. So again, I'm just throwing out some numbers. Let's just say you said, I'm going to earn $100,000 this year. Then you need to take that and divide it by 12 months. So we now have a monthly income goal. We then take it down to a weekly goal. And you just literally figure out how many people you must talk to each day to attribute the productivity on the contacts. And this, this is, is, is an easy formula, but it's something that most people won't do. They kind of want to wing it. Maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll meet the right person today instead of saying, hey, I'm going to earn X amount, X amount, X amount. I got to talk to these 20 people today and go to the door as Don Aldridge did to my home. And that's how I'm, why I'm here with you yeah. guys, because he knocked on my door. Yeah. And we're glad he did. <laughs> yes, we are. And, and that the timing of that answer, Joe, like, I mean, couldn't be better. I mean, we were just, we just released an episode a couple of weeks ago on goal setting. And that's the exact approach that we take our agents through. Good. It is what is the annual goal? And we use a tool called the 411 that takes that annual goal and it breaks it down into a monthly goal and then breaks it down yet again into the actual steps that they need to take on a weekly basis. And so again, I just want to highlight that this principle, principles of success aren't new principles. No. And we so often get enamored by the silver bullets and like the next shiny object and what true, where true success is found. It's in mastering the basics. It's mastering the fundamentals that have proven for years and decades and over many amazing legendary lives like yours to be the key to success and that'll never change uh you know the the greatest people i've met in any business ha have mastered the fundamentals of that business and the fundamentals of what to say how to handle the telephone when someone calls an ad call you know they call up yeah we saw this ad in the paper we like the address and to learn how to say fine let me put you on hold which now you can control let me put you on hold and I'll take, get some information. Coming off hold, hi, this is Tom Hopkins. So what is your name, please? So right away, coming back, I got a name. Well, uh, it's uh, Jim Smith. Mr. Smith, so happy you've called. And by the way, that property you're calling on, we are getting some good activity on. What came across to you that you wanted to call me on that? Well, it's got the right number of bedrooms. Oh, great. Have you and your wife been looking for a home for long? So now I start qualifying. How long have you been looking? Is there an area here in Scottsdale or Phoenix that you kind of like? The reason I ask that, some of the homes have no signs on them. And we call this kind of our private inventory. So if I can kind of get a general idea where you'd like to live, maybe I can find one of our private homes and we can surprise you and your family with something very special. Does that sound exciting to you? <laughs> Smooth like <laughs> silk. Oh, man. Incredible. I'm taking you door knocking, Tom. <laughs> oh, man. Tom, I just want to say thank you so much for, for investing your time with us and into our listeners. Um, I mean, people are going to be impacted and their business is going to be more successful because of the 45 minutes that you just spent with us. And so I'm grateful. I know Joe's Absolutely. grateful. Uh, Joe, Don, David, Don I is grateful. tell you how much fun it was. You had the right questions. I hope all your listeners and all your people will just take the words, make it yours, and uh, love people, use money, and become highly successful. Fantastic. Well, guys, that is a wrap on another episode, episode 30 of the All In Podcast. And as we always say, go play All In. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the All In Podcast. We want to invite you to find all of today's resources from our show page at AIPodcast.co. We also ask that you take just one minute to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. This is how we grow and how we're able to bring you the best content each and every week. Now go play All In. Thank you.